Okay, uh, now we want to talk about the various kinds of devices that can be attached to your telescope. So we mentioned earlier that the purpose of a telescope was to gather as much light as possible and then bring it to a focus where you put your devices. So here are three kinds of devices that you need to know about for the exam. The first one is the photometer, which measures the apparent brightness of the object. So it tells you the brightness of the star. The second one is a diffraction grating. Now, I know that I said that diffraction is a bad thing. Well, in this case, diffraction is a good thing. So a diffraction grating was one of these pieces of plastic that had a whole bunch of lines scratched into it. And so you put this at the focus of your telescope. Light from the star is going to hit the diffraction grating. It's then going to open up the light so that you get the rainbow of colors. And then from that, you can get the absorption spectrum, the emission spectrum, and the continuous spectrum emitted by the star. And then from that, you can figure out all the different properties of the star. Okay, then you have the charge coupling device, which is going to be used to photograph the star. So in the old days, they used chemistry. They would have a sheet of paper that would have chemicals on it. And then when light would come in and it would hit those chemicals, there would be a chemical reaction and it would leave an imprint of the photon. Today, we use the charge coupling device, uh, which is uh, very similar uh, to a, a solar cell. So that you would, uh, light comes in, it's going to hit this surface, and then the light is going to be turned into electricity. And then the electricity can go to a computer where it assembles all of those, the electrical impulses to form an image of the thing that you're looking at. And so these charge coupling devices are much faster than chemicals, and they also give you a sharper image than what the chemicals do. So what are some problems with telescopes? So the first thing is that the light that comes from a star is very dim. It has a very low intensity. So what, how do we get, uh, get around this problem? Bigger is better. So the bigger the opening to your telescope, the more photons of light it can capture. And then each photon is going to have a certain intensity that goes with it. Another way of doing it is if you've got a small telescope, keep it looking at the star for a very long period of time because then it gathers more photons. And so again, that's going to give you a brighter looking star. Okay, the next problem was diffraction. And we said that bigger is better. So that if you want to get rid of diffraction problems, have a bigger opening to your telescope. Well, uh, one way of doing it is to have an array. So that if you've got individual telescopes that have an opening that are that big, if you take the, um, the information coming from each of the three telescopes and you combine it using a computer, it's equivalent to having a telescope that's that big. So this is called an interferometer or an array. And so it's an excellent way of ending up with a telescope that is much bigger than the individual telescopes that you used. Uh, another thing that you can do is use smaller wavelengths, but sometimes you can't avoid it. So if you're looking at a star here on Earth, you might be using visible light. And so that has a certain wavelength. And so you can't control the amount of diffraction that that causes. But maybe you could look at the same star using x-rays, which uses a smaller wavelength, which would be produce less diffraction effects. OK, then you've got light pollution. And so, um, 
if you go out in the big city and you look up at the stars, you can't really see the stars that well because the light around you overwhelms it. So w the best thing to do is then to put your telescope in the middle of a desert or to put your telescope on top of a mountain so that uh, uh, you're getting less light pollution. Okay, then you also have air pollution. And so dust and air pollutants can dim the light that the star gives. So the best place to, to do it is to take your telescope, put it above the clouds, put it above the pollution where you can see things better. Okay, then another problem that you got is Earth's atmosphere. So the Earth's atmosphere uh, blocks most of the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, except for radio waves. So radio waves make it through our atmosphere, and then visible light makes it through our atmosphere, and a little bit of ultraviolet makes it through. But the two main windows, the electromagnetic windows in our atmosphere is going to be visible light and radio waves. So what about if you're interested in infrared light? Well, as you can see from the picture, most infrared light is going to be blocked by clouds. So what do you do? Take your telescope, put it in orbit. So then you can see into that part of the spectrum. Same thing for the X-rays and the gamma rays and most of the ultraviolet. Put that in orbit. So what's the point? Okay, so this picture here shows the same thing. So it's the center of our galaxy as viewed using different kinds of light. And you notice you have different pictures. So the different pictures tell you different things about what you're looking at. So when we look at stars, we want to look at the stars using as many different kinds of light as possible because each kind of light will tell us something different about the star. Uh, as far as this picture is concerned, there's a couple of things I'd like for you to know for the exam. One is that dust uh, uh, is not blocked by infrared light. So infrared is the best kind of light to use if you're trying to cut through dust. Uh, the other thing I would like for you to notice is that radio light is useful in identifying where hydrogen is located at in the universe. So the gas hydrogen can be found by using radio waves. And then later in the course, we're going to find that x-rays are very useful for identifying black holes. All right, so there you go. So that's your review for the Unit 1 exam. So make sure and have your note card, three inches by five inches. You can write anything you want on the front or the back from it. I'm going to provide for you the, the formulas, and I will also provide for you the periodic tables. So uh, study up as much as you can for this, and I will see you in class for the exam. Bye.